good rainy morning everyone and it is literally morning. I put up my first YouTube yesterday on the coronavirus. Thank you for everybody that left me a response. Thank you for everybody that watched. I can't say I didn't have actors demons, you know, those little things that say, oh, I shouldn't post it, oh, what if I said this, what if I said that. I don't really feel like going to work because I'll be working the next seven days straight. Yesterday I went out for a little shopping trip. The grocers actually, um, they're starting to have signs up, please maintain a six foot distance. So the masks and gloves are getting more prominent. There's certain spots in the grocery store that just have not recovered. Of course, the meat aisle. And then, of course, the paper goods aisle. Whoever would have thought. The place I used to work at, which is the same company that I work for now, just in a different location, uh, kind of got their walking papers so they can be out and about. Uh, that's a little bit scary. I'll go into work and see if I have walking papers yet. I don't see a lot of traffic today. I saw a lot of traffic yesterday. I had trouble getting to sleep last night. Uh, we have a neighbor that's, uh, how shall I put this, dramatic and came like almost busting down the door to, and asking us if we had water running. And we didn't. Apparently she has a leak in her apartment. So next thing I know, 12 o'clock at night, the maintenance man is in my apartment. Apparently there's a leak and he temporarily fixed it. The gas prices are beautiful nowadays. I'm able to actually keep my car gassed up. With everything going on, I don't really want it any less than, say, a half a tank. You never know when at the spur of the moment you might have to go somewhere or there's some kind of situation now that's just preparedness about my um, scam video my one scam video um, a lot of people have been asking me for a long time to do another video and it might just be about the time the robo calls have decreased but there's other types of scams out there all around COVID-19 so beware if somebody asks you to donate for some COVID-19 purpose, just really do your research before you press a button and donate any money to any charity that has to do with that. There are a lot of people out there taking advantage because they see an opportunity to actually make money where people are uh, sort of uh, in their houses. They're kind of weak to the elements. This world has just turned so much upside down that they see an opportunity in the meantime. Don't let anybody take advantage. Uh, don't let your heart get weak and say, oh, this COVID-19 patient needs help. But I've actually seen people dress up in masks and with hospital equipment around and uh, say that their spouse is dying, you know, asking for donations. Be very, very careful, and I will pick the subject up next week. So for all essential people out there, I hope you're doing very well. I hope you're hanging on. I know it's kind of scary to actually go in a world where somebody could, like, hover right over you, and we're supposed to maintain a six-foot distance. The case count, every single day it goes up. And it's not funny when somebody crosses the six foot lines that have been laid in our businesses and our establishments and uh, just kind of ignores that. I don't think they're doing it on purpose. So right now I'm going to take a drive and just kind of show you the businesses. What are they doing? Here you go. So it's open to go. Um, pepperoni and cheese. Ugh. But anyway, that's open to go, and it looks like you can call and get your food. So here is the gym. Um, okay, there are your signs. Uh, club temporarily closed. Cerrado. Okay, so that's what's going on here. Here's some of these other businesses. Basically, I...
don't know what they're doing. They've got signs up. Yeah, looks like some of these are closed. Some of these for sure. And let's see, here's a couple. Okay, so looks like everything is closed except for guess what? Subway is still open. So I don't know what they're doing, how they're serving food. It's about uh, 6.44 and I'm heading home from work. It's been a very, very strange day, I've got to say. Of course, I went to work in, in to work early this morning. Luckily, tomorrow I can get away from all this stress. I mean, it is stressful actually working around people. Um, there's supposedly social distancing. People get right up on you. I'm, I'm like living with that just about every day. Luckily tomorrow I actually go into training. It's going to be like a distance learning class so I'll kind of be away from the crowds and everything and that's going to go on about twice a week and I get to relax. I guess learn something. It worked today. Yeah, I got this little piece of paper. I'm going to try to open it up and draw it. this right here. This basically tells me, don't worry that you can't see it. All it is is about five or six signatures that say that I have a right to be on the road during curfew. It's really odd. I knew nothing about the curfew and then we got this piece of paper today. And now I know about the curfew. So I was driving home, the alarm on my phone went off and um, pretty much when I got to a stoplight I read the alert and I'll show it to you here. It says basically that the whole state of Virginia because of the governor, the governor has uh, deemed that um, Everybody goes in at an 8 o'clock curfew except for certain essential employees and that's why I have the letter. I have to carry that with me at all times just in case I'm stuck on the road. When I'm not working, I'm actually quarantining. So I think there's going to be a couple nights that I'll actually be working more. Our company did a very, very nice thing. They got uh, bags and uh, filled them full of groceries and everybody got a bag of grocery. So um, I'll be taking mine home. I doubt if most of it is vegan. Uh, my husband's not a vegan, so what he doesn't want, I'll probably end up redonating maybe to a food pantry. It's the least I could do, but what a nice gesture. I'm really liking my company these days because of the way that it's handling this issue. Everybody gets two more weeks of sick leave and they can do anything that they want with it and it goes away in October, but it doesn't necessarily go away if you don't use it and you're paid out for that time. Because who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. If I get sick, I might actually need it and hopefully, hopefully that won't be a thing. I'm trying my best, I'll tell you. Uh, masks and gloves are becoming so prevalent now. It's just like people come in to the store and they're just like absolutely 100% covered, some of them. They got their collars up and all this good stuff and then masks over their face. And I went into a 7-Eleven and got the surprise of my life. Um, what they had done was they took a plexiglass plexiglass barrier and actually put it on the front so that uh, the customers would be away from the associates. People are just rushing to protect themselves. Yesterday, um, it was Sunday, and I saw many more people out than probably should have been out and about, and I'm sure people are getting pretty sick of quarantine, but you know what? I mean, it's for our health, it's for our safety anything and everything you can to stay safe because uh, this this thing, this little tiny virus is a force to be reckoned with. Don't underestimate it. Uh, certain people, I don't know if they're in denial or what it is, but there's been a couple even news reports on it. It's people that don't believe this virus was anything and you can 
go out and you can be safe. As much destruction as it's done in other countries, maybe it's denial, but you know, whatever it is, right now, my state, get the stat, but I believe we've actually reached over 100 cases. It's a very nice day today. It's about 68 degrees. I'm happy to be driving in it, that's for sure. And, you know, the grass looks pretty. The sky looks pretty. I'm just feeling a nice nature chill after all the madness. Well, <laughs> funny story about that mask you just saw me take off. There was a lady that actually came in. I just struck up a conversation with her. I helped her. And she was asking me, with all the people coming in, why I didn't have a mask on my face. She, of course, had a mask on her face. Um, Anyway, I told her, I said, I can't even buy one. I can go down into the departments that actually carry masks, and there's not a one on the shelf. And she felt so bad for me. She said, I'm, I've got a mask, and I'm going to give it to you. Actually, so she ran out in her car. She got me a mask. That just opened my heart up wide. It was just like I could not believe. That was like the most wonderful thing. This lady gave me a mask when I work in a store that sells masks and I can't even get one. Now to be fair, we have donated um, all our masks to the hospitals around. Um, and then at one point as I was wearing my lovely mask all day, a lady comes in and she asked me if we had like mask for the face. I told her no, that we're out of stock on everything like that. She left and I could just kind of tell the way she was looking. Um, it was just like uh, she wanted to know why she couldn't get a mask and I had one on my face and then I felt bad for her because I couldn't provide anything like that for her. But uh, that does lead into another thing. Hey, I guess quarantine has just gotten too much. I started noticing it on Sunday that people were just running around the store like crazy. Like we're not under um, emergency warning. And they were just buying up things that really didn't have anything to do with uh, being quarantined or, you know, no emergency items, no nothing like that. All kinds of things that, uh, you know, really don't have anything to do with an emergency situation. But no, they weren't coming in for emergency supplies and that's the reason we're staying open. Some people were just walking around, glad to get out of the house. Um, so I'm trying very hard not to be judgmental about that, but, um, this is a quarantine. I mean, there's no reason for all that. And that, uh, my store is starting, going to start limiting how many people actually come in at a time. Helped one of my managers, uh, actually put up, put up, uh, signs all afternoon. Things are going to change. We're going to have one door standing open. You know, we want to be safe, too. We're all, like, getting up in our faces and, uh, you know, just, like, really kind of ignoring the six-foot distance and stuff like that. And it's just getting wilder. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I totally understand, you know, but I want to go home. I want to be safe. I want my family to be safe. I want um, everybody around me to be safe. I don't want to catch it. Even with me having a mask now, if there's anybody breathing in the air and water droplets are surrounding me, it just stops that from going into my mouth. And then if I were to catch it, it would stop me from spreading it to somebody else. That's about the extent of it. It's not a full coverage. It's not a full guarantee. It's just kind of a safeguard. It was a crazy day. As a matter of fact, um, I was walking around the store trying to disinfect surfaces today and I had a bottle of disinfectant with me and there was maybe about an inch left in the bottle and um, customer was actually looking for disinfectant 
Anyway, of course, we had none on the shelves whatsoever, so I just pretty much gave him what was left in the bottle, and I said, here, I'll give you this until you get something else. Because of the whole six-foot distance thing, people not honoring it, I was also handing out badges that say, please maintain a six-foot distance. And that was my afternoon, and I was doing it I'm not sure from what or whatever, just to maybe help the world. I guess you could say that, um, you know, that was just part of my karma yoga. I knew it would be an intense week, and it certainly is intense. It's draining. Uh, tomorrow's another day when I have uh, class, so I can go in the back and focus and not be bothered. And just take class. But... Did what I could today. I fought the good fight. Now I'm going home. I'm so happy about that. And I have a mask. Finally. Uh, finally I got some rest. Um, I had the weekend off. It was nice. I pretty much put myself in quarantine. Uh, went out to the store for a little bit just to get a few things. I wanted to actually revisit diet and its role to kind of keep your immunity up, keep the mucus down. Last week I uh, pretty much presented that dairy that will inflame your lungs. It definitely will promote mucus in your system. Thanks to Super Vegan What, now I've got a video and I'll put the link down below uh, that you could actually watch Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine and they mention several other things you can do. Of course, it's all um, centered around fruits and vegetables. It's plant-based. Anybody that wants to dispute it, the only thing I can say is you know your mother actually told you to always eat your fruits and veggies. But um, anyway, they do mention other healing foods, actually, that can definitely help you. And uh, there's not a mystery or a secret here among that list. Garlic, ginger, blueberries, um, berries in general. These things will actually uh, boost your immunity. Um, very interesting video. I hope you watch it. It will enlighten you on certain things that you can do. Um, again, I'm not going to proselytize, tell you to become vegan or tell you not to become vegan, but these are things that could be very, very useful. And thank you very much, Super Vegan What? And I hope this information gets out there. I'm going to end this video on a very, very sad note. Just this week, just this week, I've heard that... A Facebook friend that I have, uh, one of their relatives actually suddenly died from COVID-19. Um, so this thing is actually, for me, getting closer to home. Maybe somebody in your family has been touched by it, too. So I hear from the news, my area, they say that it's going to hit D.C. pretty soon, and it's going to hit it hard. I live about 50 miles out from D.C. In my area, I'm liable to see a lot. So, we've already had one person in my particular town, my particular small town, who has actually just died from COVID-19 infection. An older lady. A friend of mine actually got in touch with me. One of her very close relatives lives in Queens, New York. They cannot, uh, in his household, um, he is not able to get himself or anybody else in for medical treatment because New York is standing in such a mess right now. So I just want to take this time, just want to take a minute, play some music, put on some nature shots that I've taken and um, just reflect on lives that are lost all around the world.